Can we do annotations and callouts in Lightworks? Well, just about. Stick around, let's figure it out. Now, us Lightworks users have to put up with quite a bit of limitation when we're using this program. If it's not the resolution of our outputted, exported movies, it's the complete lack of being able to do things that other programs do quite easily. Now, one of those things came as a comment in one of my previous videos about putting a red circle on the screen. Now, these are really useful for marking out parts of your video or highlighting something that you're showing on the screen. We can actually do this, but we have to do it in a kind of roundabout way, almost like we're cheating, but it is quite possible. So let's get going. I've lined up this shot of a PCB, an electronics board, and I thought it would be good to highlight this area here. I know it's just a mounting screw of the PCB, but just to prove our point, we can actually highlight this with a red circle. Now, before we get going, let's mark an in and an out to our scene here. So I'll mark in an in with an letter I on my keyboard. Just let it play for a little while. Let it play for longer than I normally do and mark the out with the letter O on my keyboard. So there's my portion I want the red circle to appear on. Let's go to the plus sign, make sure we're in matte, and throw in a simple 2D shape. Let's take the softness off, you know how much I hate that soft edge. Let's turn the rectangle into an ellipse, and let's turn that circle red. What we're then going to do, go back to plus, and throw in yet another 2D shape, take the softness off, make it into an ellipse. And how we're going to get the red circle to show is by making the width and the height smaller than the circle below it. And there we have a white circle on top of a red circle. Now, as a hint, if you want something to look a little bit more professional, a little bit sharper, go for about a 2% difference between the top and the bottom circle. So 48 to 50. And if you adjust the red circle to a little bit smaller, make sure that the white circle is about 2% lower. Anything more than that, and it starts to look a bit too fat. Now, in order to get the white circle to disappear, we're going to have to do a little trick with a key. So we're going to key out the white using a Luma key. Let's throw the Luma key on top of the other VFXs. And you can see that I've got the red circle just disappearing. Let's click on the invert and instead the white circle will now disappear. If you pull up the edge softness, you can see what's happening here. It's basically keying out the white or using the white and turning that transparent. I normally don't touch anything after I've done that because it already looks cool to me. Now let's throw that circle on top of our PCB mount there. And you can see that the circle's too big. So let's adjust it. Let's go in and make this 25% both width and height. And let's go and make this 23% width and height. And you can see we've now got quite a nice circle on top of our picture there. Let's just let that play. Press my spacebar, And you can see it goes there. Now, in itself, the red circle is fantastic, it works. But we've just introduced a problem where the red circle actually needs to follow the actual highlighted part of the video. And if you've been watching my other videos, you'll know this is really quite easy. So let's just press A on my keyboard, go to the start frame. That will be there. And let's put in some keyframes for the X and Y position of both the white circle, which by the way is now transparent, and the red circle, which you can see. So let's do that right now. Let's put in a keyframe for the X and Y position and the X and Y position of both circles there. Obviously, we don't have to keyframe anything here in the Luma key because that's just doing its thing. Let's just let this play forward a little bit. Let's see if that's going on a linear path. Seems fairly steady. It's just a normal path. So there's no acceleration or deceleration. So we'll take that to the end. It's there. And what we'll do is we'll pick that up and move it there. Remembering that it will automatically keyframe everything that we keyframed in the first frame because we moved it. Let's just press play like this. And you can see that the red circle is now following, almost looking like we're tracking that shot. It's so well done. Obviously, if your picture's moving, but not in a linear fashion, so if it's moving around a bit, you're going to have to put more keyframes in 
to match the movement of the red circle to the movement on the screen. But in this case, you can see it looks really well done. Almost, as I said, looks like a tracked red circle because it's fixed so beautifully on that on that PCB mount over there. Now, another thing that we can do or another thing that we can animate is the size of the circle. Now, for this particular shot here, there's really no need to do that. But I know you guys want to see how to do this. So let's get ahead and do it. So what we'll do is we'll let it play a portion there and then we'll start messing around with the size. Now, obviously, the size is the width and the height of both circles. So let's keyframe that in now. Like that, you can see at the bottom, we've now got a new keyframe there in our timeline. We'll let it play like that. There you go, like that. And what we'll do is we'll just increase the size. So we'll go to what should we say? Let's go to 33% and make the outer circle 35% like that. So we've got a much bigger circle now. If we rewind and play that, let's see what it looks like. So the circle grows in size and just for fun, we can make it go back to its original size. Again, this is not meaningful for this video. It's just an illustration that you can actually increase the size of the, the circle itself during the video. So what we'll do is we'll just throw in another keyframe there and then by the last frame, which is going to be there, we will reduce the size back to what it was. And I think it was 25% from memory. I'm doing this now. I think it was like that. So once we watch this full video here, you can see the circle grows and shrinks back to size. So again, not representative of why you're going to use a red circle on the screen, but I hope you can see the potential that you've got of just throwing in two shapes and a Luma key on top just to give yourself a red circle. Obviously, you're not restricted to red and you're not restricted to a circle. You can actually make rectangular ones, which lends itself to other videos as well. So I hope watching this video, you can see the potential for using little highlights on the screen just to show something on your video, a feature or an area of your screen that needs to be highlighted. And I'll be the first person to admit that other programs would do this much simpler simply drawing it and animating it and wouldn't require you to have two shapes plus a Luma key just to do something simple. But if we're using Lightworks on our computers or if we've got no other alternative, then this would be a great way to highlight stuff on your screen. So hope you enjoyed that video. Hope you learned something new and see you next time. Hey guys, thanks for watching. Really appreciate it. Think about clicking that like button Subscribe to the channel if you want to keep up and maybe think about hitting the bell notifications if you want to be notified every time a new video comes up.